he's worthy to be praised. Good morning to you all. Praise the Lord. What day is this? to have a prayer, uh, a song of praise, some announcements, another song of praise, uh, and then the pastor will illustriously come and break bread with you and give you the word. So may God bless you and may he keep you. You may be seated. Good morning, church family. Would you please stand? He just wanted to get you a little exercise this morning. Amen. Amen. We will now read our covenant, but unlike before, we will not touch the hymnals. Amen. So I will just read it for you. And if you know it by heart, by all means, you can join in with me. Amen. Somebody's pointing like they're going to put it up on the screen, but it's not going to be up on the screen. Amen. So it reads as follows. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the professions of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and disassembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin to sustain his worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us toward its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who had called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Amen. And while you remain standing, our scripture this morning will come from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 10 through 14. And it reads as follows. Again, Esther spake unto Haddock and gave him commandment unto Mordecai, all the king's servants, and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. 
but I have not been called to come unto the king these 30 days. And they, thought, and they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all Jews. And verse 14, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. It's prayer time, church. As those are coming in, just want you to sit there and think about over the last year and a half what God has done for you. We're not worried about the pandemic because in all actuality, the pandemic has been a blessing for each and every one of us because it has taught us what is most important to us, and that is God. Amen? So let's go to God in prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Oh, gracious Father, the Sunday school lesson is on my mind this morning. The teacher talked about only you. And it's not just only you, O oh Heavenly Father, as the teacher said. It's us as well, O oh Heavenly Father because we have to do something. He showed a picture of the church being empty and it made me think about a card that I made that I sent to people when I hadn't seen them in church in a while and it said the church is empty without you. So Heavenly Father, we're empty without you, oh Heavenly Father. So we just call on you right now, oh Heavenly Father. As I scanned the church, oh Heavenly Father, I saw some faces that it appears they've been going through a little something. And as I think about it, there's some that are showing on their face and we don't even know that they've gone through things, oh Heavenly Father, but you do. So we just ask that you be with them. So a deacon used to say, you close your eyes and shut out the world right now. Oh Heavenly Father, our eyes are closed and we shutting them out, but we're not shutting you out. We just need you right now, oh Heavenly Father. Come on in here and sit with us for a little while. Oh, Heavenly Father, as I look over to my right, I see my mother in love not here this morning. She's not feeling the best, but she's okay right now, Heavenly Father. We spoke to her before we came in here. So we just ask that you be with her because we know she's here in spirit with us right now. And then when I look, I see Sister Sneed comes in mind. And then we got First Lady Graham over there, oh, Heavenly Father. She told me she didn't have a good week this week. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with her, oh, Heavenly Father, because she's still here. Oh, Heavenly Father, she's doing what you have commanded her to do, and that's stand next to a pastor. We call him the APP, the all-purpose pastor. We just ask that you touch him right now, oh, Heavenly Father, as he bring forth the word, give him what he needs to give us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with this choir as they sing songs of Zion. Be with the musicians as they play and, come, and just to be with them as they're singing. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us through, us through this week because it's a new month, oh, Heavenly Father, a day that we never see again. We just ask that you continue to bless us and bless this country because we need you right now, oh, Heavenly Father, and only you can get us through it. We ask these in your precious name. Amen.
Yes, he is. God is worthy. Yes, he is. Come on. Police. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Well, God is worthy. Yes, he is. God is worthy. Yes, he is. Woke us up this morning, started us on our way. God is worthy. God is worthy to be he put shoes on our feet, clothes on our backs. God is worthy. God is worthy to be I said he woke us up this morning, started us on our way. God is worthy. Put food on our tables. I know the Lord is able. God is worthy. God is worthy well, God is worthy. God is worthy. Yes, he is. God is worthy. God is worthy. Yes, he is. Come on. Police. something for you. Let me see you wave one hand. Let me see you wave one hand. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Said he's been real good and he's been real kind. Can I tell you one thing? Jesus is mine. That's why I got to lift him. 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 Nobody but Jesus started me on my way. Can you help me lift him? 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 God is worthy. Help me lift him. God is worthy. Yes, he is. Come on. Believe. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Well, come on and lift him. Ain't he all right? Come on and lift him. If he's done something for you. Let me see you wave one hand. Let me see you wave one hand. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. That he's been real good. And he's been real kind. Can I tell you one thing? Jesus is mine. Praise. 
I believe if I'd call the choir during the week and say I'd like to have these songs sung, it probably would have upset people, but God said it's going to happen anyway. That lady was up there singing, and I said, she's reminding me of Miriam, who led the group. Who's Miriam? One of the sisters who led the singing, praising God. That's what this should be about. Psalm 100, come before his presence with singing. Amen. I can't get away from it. This was mighty good, mighty good. I want to continue to encourage you to do as God has directed us in taking care of ourselves and others. We've had a little encouraging information during the week where there may be a pill, where there are a few more taking the shots, and also those who are under 12. So we pray that things continue to look up. And as I say that, that is no call for us to drop our guard. Let's continue to be diligent in what we're doing, and we pray God's continued blessings upon us that we can avert being caught with the COVID. Let us pray for the sick among us. Sister Valerie Wyatt comes to mind, and we mentioned Sister Felisa Turner, the nursing home, and Wife wasn't 100%, but much better than she was on yesterday. And there are others that I may not call by name, but we certainly want to continue to pray for our church family as a whole. And those outside of the church family, we are asked and commissioned in the Bible to pray for everyone, regardless of their status. With that, we're thankful to God that this is a first Sunday of a new month, and he has blessed those who are going to be celebrating one day older. Those who are in the month of October, would you please stand? Those in the month of October with a birthday, please stand. I see one got the hand up over there. I don't know if that's an acknowledgement that I don't want you to know that I, I got you. You're all right. My wife's birthday is in this month, too. And I don't see her. That's what these masks do for us. But I understand that Sister Deaconess Clark has a birthday this month. And God has allowed her to see many years. So if she hears this and sees this, she knows that we did not forget her. Amen. Amen. Can we, may we? Happy birthday. not to forget and to encourage our youth who probably have suffered probably greater in many ways than the adults through this pandemic situation that they have the youth empowerment program this Wednesday at 6 p.m. and the information was given prior to Sunday school so we ask that you be encouraging in that area. I also want to mention that we're going to handle our communion as we did in the past. The pastor will come up and he will have prayer, take the communion. And those of us can go home. If you don't see it on today's uh, casting, you certainly can go to another first Sunday and go to the very end of the service and have communion as we have done over the past months until we can go back to our regular procedures in communion. Is that it? Let us bow our heads for offertory prayer. 
Eternal God, our Father, we thank thee that you have allowed us to come to service one more time. We come, Heavenly Father, with our tithes and offerings. We ask your blessings upon it, Heavenly Father. You said in your word that you love a cheerful giver. Let us be cheerful in our giving. Let us be thankful in our giving. For Heavenly Father, you gave the greatest gift that man could ever receive when you gave us your son. And we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Not only this day, but each and every day and each and every moment that you grant into our lives. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remind you to please place your tithes and offering in the box that is provided outside the door as you leave if you have not already done so. Thank you. so glad he died for me I'm so glad he shed his blood for me I'm so glad he rose for me Sweet Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, I'm so glad he died for me. So glad he shed his blood just for me. So glad he rose for me. Sweet Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Sweet Jesus, yeah, Jesus, help me say
Mars, and I promise, praise him while you can't. Praise him while you can't. Praise him while you can't. the church say amen. 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 If you don't feel that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aaron just says give the benediction now. Amen. We having church today. We having church today. You ain't hear what I said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're having church today. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank God for a chance to praise his name. Yeah. One more time. We thank God yeah. for allowing us to be here one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Praise him while you can. Yeah. Reason why you can. Let me thank God for this choir. Yes. The, is this the sisterhood choir? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the mass choir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we need to thank these, uh, these the day who come out and practice, then come and sing to us on Sunday morning, time after time after time. Thank God for our musicians. We thank God for our new uh, Deacon Daniel, I have one question. Uh, that the bass player has a new bass fiddle. Did we pay for that? to talk to uh, trustee Willie Wright. Willie Wright, did we pay for that bass fiddle? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it's good to laugh. Uh, it's good to laugh. Don't ever be in, in my presence and you don't laugh. Right. A day without laughter is a day wasted. Colonel Arrington, uh, that football player of yours must have had a rabbit foot in his piece in his back pocket last week. He kicked that field goal. 66 yards, was it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank God for we can. So you asked that you will continue to.
pray for those who are sick among our church family and uh, I ask that you send them cards uh, whenever you can. Sister Rose, send them Felicia Turner a card and others who are sick. Pray for them. There, but for the grace of God, go to them and not you. It's good to see all of you today. Eh? I ask God to bless this family, this church family. We are a church family. I received a phone call last week from Sister Kathy Ford, who thinks she's still a member here. Uh, Sister Taylor, she said that some of her family would be here today. Is there any family members here from Kathy Ford? Family members here? All right, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss anybody. We had anyone visiting us for the first time? If so, please stand. First time visit, please stand. Oh, there she is. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, Brother Bailey is not married. <laughs> That's Brother Bailey's thing there. He shook your hand. <laughs> I thank you for coming, my sister. Thank you for coming. Amen. Bailey got up right away. Uh, thank God for our ushers today and all those who are working in the church. There is a word from the Lord. Uh, I received a phone call from Reverend Stallworth saying that she might still be in the neighborhood, but I don't see her. I was still with here with a mask on. No, she didn't make it. All right. Brother Stallworth preached that thing last Sunday. He preached that thing last Sunday. Thank God for her. Certainly be in prayer for those who are sick. Good to see Brother John Harris, his favorite daughter, out of town last week, but she's back today. God bless you. The book of Esther, the book of Esther, I, um, this is a favorite, one of my favorite scriptures, Deacon Daniel, uh, talks about a brother by the name of Mordecai. Uh, there's certain lessons in the book of this lesson today. Yeah. Esther. The fourth chapter. 10 through and including the 14th verse. We thank you, my brother, for reading for us so eloquently. Uh, I 
I see you always try to sit beside your father in law. Fourth chapter. I just want to lift up the tenth verse. Make it eleventh. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, the 11th verse, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king and into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter. Call to come in unto the king these 30 days. The 14th verse. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, Mordecai is talking to Esther. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then there shall there an enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art to come to the kingdom such a time as this? Do you know that someone has been put into your life for such a time as this. I'm talking to somebody in here. God has a way of using us. And that's my subject, ushers. Such a time as this. Here we are. Here we are. The Book of Esther. One of the most exciting books. The Old Testament. Full of drama. Exciting to read and it tells of how God can use a young Jewish woman to save a nation. God can use anybody. God can use you. He used Alice this morning. Alice sang that song this morning. anybody. Here we are, four main characters in this lesson. We have the king, we have brother Mordecai, we have brother Haman, 
and Sister Esther. Mordecai was Esther's uncle. He raised her. But Mordecai and Esther were both Jews. The king was not a Jew. Haman, Haman was a big shot. He worked for the king. He had a little power. I want to introduce these people to you now so you can understand where I'm going with this thing. Haman had a little power. You have to be careful sometimes with people who have a little power. Sometimes those who have a little power are worse than those who have a lot of power. But as for me and my house, I have the power. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir. Haman. Brother Deacon Heyman was a big shot. Strutted his stuff around the kingdom. King gave him a little power. And he used it in the wrong way. The servants, the servants uh, were under his leadership. Haman had the king's ear. He, he, he was able to talk to the king just about any time. The king always listened to Haman. Haman told the king he didn't Haman, see, Haman didn't like Mordecai. And he, he set out to get rid of Mordecai. But Mordecai worshiped God. Anytime you worship God, you're in good company. Haman told the king that some bad things about Mordecai. Mordecai. Mordecai was a Jew. Talked the king into getting rid of all the Jews in his province. Men, women, boys, and girls. However, there's somebody called Esther. Esther was the 
king's queen. Esther was a beautiful woman. Mordecai deliberately made sure the king saw Esther. There was a mustard to it, his madness. King saw Esther. So I want to marry her. Chose her as his queen. Esther, living high off the hog now, enjoying life in the palace, had the king's ear whenever she wanted to. But don't forget, Esther was a Jew. Mordecai was a Jew. Haman got to the ear of the king. Told him some terrible things about the Jews. And the king says, he, he encouraged the king, and the king went along with him to get rid of all the Jews. But the king did not know that Esther was a Jew. Mordecai. Mordecai went to talk to Queen Esther. This is his girlfriend. You got to go talk to the king. You got to talk to the king. He's going to put out the decree to kill all of the Jews. Esther, go, go talk to the king. But don't forget now, you just can't walk in to talk to the king. You had to have special invitation. Anybody who didn't was not allowed to come in and talk to the king. And Esther made this clear to Mordecai, I can't go in to see the king. I, I can't do that. My life is at stake here. And Mordecai reminded her, Girlfriend, don't you realize that God made you for such a time as this? And you need to remember that. God has put you where you are for such a time as this. Dr. Sneed, I realized the situation you are in, have been in. Sister Sneed has had her ups and downs. But don't you know he put you there for such a time as this? God always puts us where we need to be, not where we want to be.
There are, there are people in here right now taking care of their loved one. And sometimes the road gets hard. Road gets tough. And you may say to yourself, Lord, why me? But God will put you there for such a time as this. Over 30 years ago, this church had lost their pastor. And they called for another pastor. And I said to myself, self, why does God want you to go to Frederick? But I see this passage of scripture. Such a time as this. God always has the master plan. The master plan. And there are times we can't see the end because God would not allow us to see the end. But God knows the beginning and the end. Esther says, no, 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 Uncle Mordecai, I can't go in to see the king because he has not called me. In fact, it's been over 30 days since I've been in there. Mordecai says to her, you have to go in and talk to the king. For such a time as this. Esther went in and talked to the king. And Deacon only. She went in and sing that favorite song. If I perish, let me perish. But I'm going to see the king. What's your point? What's your point? My point is we may not always understand why God puts us where we are. But he puts us there for a purpose. You may not see it, but God has you where you are for a purpose. You may not feel comfortable right now, but in, in time, you'll understand it better. By and by. This pandemic is with us. So this pandemic. But you, do you know that in this pandemic, some of us have gotten closer to our loved one? All because of such a time as this. Families have gotten closer. They pray together for such a time as this. And some people come to visit the church 
not knowing why. Why did I go to that church today? Why did I sit beside that brother today? But you didn't haphazardly come to this church, my sister. God sent you here for such a time as this. You need to be among worshipers, those who worship him. Worship him. On Sunday morning, as I get ready to take my seat, I believe in my heart, I believe in my heart that God puts us where we need to be. And God uses each one of us in the way that he wants to use us. And God blesses us unexpectedly. For the situation that you're in. So don't worry about the position you're in. Don't, don't, don't get upset about this position you're in. God put you there. Such a time as this. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart, my heart, that God has blessed our church because of people like you who come Sunday after Sunday to worship him. Not for form or for fashion, but just for the worship experience. And so as I take my seat, every Sunday morning, make your way to the house of God. Because there, there but for the grace of God, if it had not been for him, where would you be? And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you should sit down and start counting your blessings. Every now and then, sit down and count your blessings. See what the Lord has done for you. And as we conclude our message, I never want you to wonder why you're where you are if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't wonder God put you there. Because God has something for you to do. Let the church say amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know that 
there may be someone who came in looking for a church home. It's my duty as pastor to extend the invitation to some man, woman, boy or girl who may be looking for a church home. If you are looking for a church home, we ask that you will kindly stand. And these deacons will make sure that you get to where you need to be. But always look for a church home. Everybody, everybody needs to have a church home. So is there one today? Amen. Have you been here before, my sister? Your first time here? Bless your heart. Brother Bailey is not married. That's right, let her come up, please. Thank you. These are the deacons of our church. They're going to take you back there, get some information from you. Now, you won't see her again until next Sunday because we're going to take all the information back there and then let you see her and find out who she is next, next Sunday, all right, because of the pandemic. All right. It's time for the communion. The choir wants to sing a song. If I perish. Let me perish, oh, I'm going to see the king. Mother won't go.
this is the first Sunday, and we serve communion here on the first Sunday, but due to the pandemic, we're not serving it here. But when you get home, you can look at one of our services that we take earlier and get the same kind of information. And you have your Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come on this time, uh, the first Sunday of a brand new month, to thank you for your grace and your mercy, to thank you for how you blessed us so much. Allow us to see another first Sunday. We didn't deserve it, but because you loved us so much, we thank you, dear God. And now it's time to commune with you. We do this in remembrance of you. This represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He hung on Calvary's cross for our sins. We do this in remembrance of him. This represents his body that hung on the cross for our sins. But take and eat, eat ye all of it. And dear God, I peel back the second layer to expose the Jews that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blood that he shed on Calvary for our sins. Thank God for Jesus. Take and drink. Let the church say amen. Stand. You have come to worship. God is pleased with you because you have come to worship. Some did not come, but you have come to worship. And God is worthy of your worship. So now for the benediction as we leave this place, but not God's sight. And now may the grace, the love, the peace, and the joy of our Lord and Savior. His name is Sweet Communion of the Holy Spirit. May the rest rule and abide with each of us. Now and henceforth and forevermore. And those who love the Lord sang. Amen.
sing one for the Holy Spirit. Amen.